And we did talk about how the NBA, I don't know if you're aware of this, the NBA is no longer randomly testing players for marijuana. Uh, yes. Um, and I have and I noticed in Las Vegas, they open up for cannabis lounges as well. That's correct. Yeah, exactly. So I was hoping like you guys are going to do something there. And also, would you recommend your product to NBA players since they're not getting tested no more? Well, listen, um, I, I would prefer them to use my product because my product is the best product in the world. And um, I'm just looking forward. This is just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. I'm looking forward to cannabis to be and uh, become a superfood. And in every store and in every gas station, I just wanted, um, not from necessarily um, an enterprise perspective, but just from a world perspective. Look what we did, you know, look what we did. They made this the devil and we making it life. What would you recommend, like any specific brand or train to you? Have the NBA players or any athletes? Well, it depends on what, how you want to feel. You want to go down and do some Indica, you do some OG Kush. But if you want to stay up and enjoy the world, you do some um, what's what's the name? Of, what's the name of the smoke? Tiger Mints? You got a no. good sativa Tiger Mints. Tiger Mints are the best, but also the stuff I drink, I always smoke. Oh, the uh, sour diesel. Sour diesel, your sour diesel. Is my favorite. That's your favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good one too. <laughs> it keeps me thinking. Is that what you smoke? Because I know I I, I told uh. So Sandy and then that I watch your uh, your podcast all the time. Is that what you smoke on your podcast mostly? Yes, yes. It's not that difficult to realize that it's the best product in the world. And I listen. I'm not tooting my horn. It just is. At, you know, look at the um, look at the writers of the people that tried it. And, you know, you know what? Find out what you think their opinion would be. Do you think all sports should do that? Like not test players for marijuana? And if that's the case, would you recommend uh, these NBA players to use your product? Absolutely. So I've worked with dozens of athletes, all different uh, categories, whether it was hockey, football, basketball, baseball, um, and tons of my friends, I mean, have, have been injured, whatever sport it be for whatever purpose. And a lot of them will don't want to use pharmaceutical drugs. A lot of these drugs people get hooked on, whether it's the perks and oxys and so on. And a lot of them use edibles and cannabis products instead. I'm so happy about the NBA I can, and we'll continue to fight for all um, all of the leagues to push forward and join the cause. I mean, it's it's supporting your your athletes. So, I mean, I don't see why we wouldn't. Um, and not necessarily smoking it. A lot of these guys, because of their endurance, their cardio that they need, smoking may not be the, the best um, consumption method for it. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but edibles or tinctures, there's creams. I mean, you know, icy hot patches. These guys hurt their back. Put a patch on your back. I mean, we have THC and CBD patches. Um, there's so many alternatives that just, I think it's a lack of knowledge um, and the ability for us to advertise a lot of these products. Um makes it difficult for the education and, and knowledge to get out there. We're not allowed to put a commercial. I can't have a Super Bowl commercial saying Tyson 2.0, come get my cannabis, you know, come check out this uh, cannabis medicine. Um, I mean, maybe so you should. <laughs> I'd love to, if they, if the networks would allow it, yes, we would like, be I'll, there. I'll, Sign I'll, me I'll, up. <laughs> you guys should like, maybe like, you know, since NBA then, you know, did this new thing where they're not going to randomly test players for marijuana. Maybe you guys should like come into you know partnership and Agreed. you know like Tyson point you know two point oh at times the NBA and you know do something together. That'd be pretty dope. Like to be Absolutely. like the players that connect when it comes to like you know cannabis and TV, like you said, that'd be pretty dope. Yeah, and now now that they opened up, I mean, we've spoken to many athletes to join the Karma Hold Co. family um, due to some of their contracts are unable to. But now with the NBA, we might there there's some open discussions uh, to be had on that front for sure. <laughs> it was great speaking with Adam. I spoke to him earlier about your uh, new launch of your coffee shop in Amsterdam. Oh man, so I don't know what to say about that. I'm just um, I'm speechless. Great. Well, I, I can imagine. I heard your Tyson 2.0 brand is doing very well. And like he said, you're a big fan of Amsterdam. Oh, um, absolutely. I have a lot of good memories. I have a lot of friends still over there. And to be able to launch in Amsterdam, being one of the uh, most mature cannabis markets in the world, people come from all over the world to experience not only the history and fun, but all the cannabis um 
focused uh, cafes and and consumption lounges and such in Amsterdam. So uh, when we had the opportunity to partner with one of the strongest uh, cafe owners out there, um, everyone on the team was extremely excited. Mike's a huge fan of Amsterdam as well. Um, on top of that, it's it's bringing the Tyson 2.0 brand um, to consumers around the world. Uh, Amsterdam marks our 12th country that we have Tyson 2.0 products now available in. Um, at this cafe, you have a full Tyson 2.0 student glass dab bar, which is a gravity bong. You get to spin completely upside down. It's a real full Tyson 2.0 experience. So you come in, you can buy cannabis, uh, baked goods. You can buy ear shaped uh, cookies and brownies. Um, you can buy uh, pre-rolled joints. You can buy bagged flour, um, all different Tyson 2.0 cannabis products that you can experience in-house at our Tyson 2.0 cafe. And I've never been there. So now I have a reason. <laughs> yeah. to go well, we'd on. love to have you at our cafe located <laughs> right between the W hotel and the, uh, and the Soho. It's a great location. Um, I mean, the foot traffic's just been wild. We we have lineups every day. We, we I mean, on our last weekend, we launched last Friday, we had lineups in the rain. People were standing there in the rain, just just wanting to experience the Tyson 2.0 Cafe. And how does it feel to work with, like, two legends? Like, you got Rick Flair, who's, like, considered a wrestling, you know, legend. And yep. then you got Tyson, who's my GOAT. Um, but a lot of people's GOATs. Like, how does it feel to work with, like, two, like, phenomenal athletes? It's, you know what, I got to pinch myself most mornings that I get to wake up and and I wake up to, you know, a text message from Mike Tyson most mornings saying, have a blessed day. Or he's he's become not only a partner, but but one of my best friends. Um, he's one of the sweetest people on the planet um, and one of the toughest at the same time. And and honestly, he's it's it's a privilege every day I get to wake up and say, yeah, yeah. I get to represent Mike Tyson's uh, brand. 